What's up, everybody? Michael Gardner here, founder of DFYMeetings.com, your choice for done for you cold emails, getting you more meetings. Now, today's video, we're going to talk about appointment setting because obviously getting responses of cold email is one thing, but actually turning those into sales discovery calls is another. So if you're feeling frustrated that you're getting people to respond, but they're just not getting onto the calendar, then this video is going to help you out quite a lot. Drop it. So really quick, what are we considering appointment setting? Appointment setting is taking someone who has already responded to your cold email campaign and working them onto your calendar. So essentially taking them from a lead to a actual booked call, because obviously that is the most important thing here. So why is appointment setting so important? Well, obviously you can get response as much as you want, but if people aren't going to get on the phone, they're not going to be buying from you. So you've already spent your money, your time, and your testing to get this response. You've put your best effort into it and you really want to make sure this person is turning into a call. And by not putting your best effort into appointment setting, you're, you're just having huge waste financially in terms of time, in terms of lost revenue. And I see so many people work hard on everything, then they get a response and then they're lazy about it. So it's just not good. Um, if you want a full pipeline and a full calendar, this needs to be done right. And the thing is, it's not that hard, it's just basics here. So if you're struggling, the good news is it's probably pretty easy to fix. So let's go over types of responses that you're going to get from cold emails. Um, obviously there's a lot of different types of responses. I've broken down to roughly five categories. You have a positive. Yes. A positive. Yes. Is someone who's excited or ready to talk. They're asking you when you can talk. These are the easiest people to go ahead and book in. Next is inquisitive. Yes. This is a lot of uh, ones where I see people kind of fall off and not convert for appointments. These are people who are interested, but they have questions or objections or limiting beliefs. So we're just not quite sure. Um, these are ones where I see a lot of people just lose the appointment when in reality, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, we have maybe laters, which those can turn into bookings. If you're managing your CRM properly, if not, they're completely lost. Um, next, we have polite no's. These are people who already have an agency or we're not interested now, but you know, maybe another time or they said no in a polite way, no thank you. Then we have the no's that are rude. Those are the ones that tell you to F off, go to hell, whatever. Um, that, you know, is going to be the percentage of your responses as well. So uh, one thing to note is not to get too emotional about the responses you get from your emails. The same email will drive all five of these, right? It's not like if you get, you're not just going to get one of them, you're going to get all five. So the same message will have someone angry and pouting and somebody excited to talk. So don't worry about people who aren't happy. They don't matter. You're not gonna get their money anyway. So some things to consider when your appointment setting, and we'll look at some examples here are their position. So the way you're going to appointment set somebody who's a CEO of a very large company versus the way you're going to appointment set a mom and pop business owner is much different. If a massive CEO, you're probably going to be scheduling for secretary, um, or at least more in your terms of mom and pop business, then you're probably going to be scheduling um, a bit more directly and casually. Personalization. I don't personalize my outreach too much. I, I don't normally do personalized lines, but appointment setting, I certainly personalize because that person is way more valuable than just some, one of my lead lists who've already indicated interest. So we're actually going to be personalizing um, our appointment setting. Another big one is energy matching. And the biggest killer of this is people hiring an appointment setter who just uses templates. Um, it, it just won't work. If someone says they're super excited or whatever, you want to match that energy. If they use emojis, use emojis. If they use exclamations, use exclamations. You want to match their energy uh, to make them more excited to talk to you, where if it's just a template, it's gonna, it's not going to do well. Um, and number one is polite calendar sending. So I see a lot of people who are like, book on my calendar. Uh, we, we want to make sure we're referencing the calendar respectfully, including other options, which we'll, we'll jump into here when we do some examples. So let's take somebody who has given us a positive yes. Yes, I'd love to talk. How's Thursday? So if I were going to respond to this person, I would say, Hi, name. Great to hear from you. Hope your week is going well. Thursday works perfectly. Here's a link to my calendar to easily sort out a time that fits into your schedule.
You could also say this. Um, let me know if nothing listed works for you, and I'm happy to either book into yours or sort out a time manually. And then here's what I'd love to do personalization. We do like PS. Like I'm gonna pretend I'm doing my offer. I do cold email done for you, we book appointments. Yes, I think cold emails will do amazing for company name, especially leveraging your case studies with companies like X, Y, and Z. So it's a slight personalization. You know, this is gonna do well right here. We're gonna send this message. It's gonna to go to them, it matches their energy, it's polite, and it's gonna do well. Uh, I think not having an ego in appointment setting is a big thing, like you're you're nobody at this point, you're just so random in their inbox, so if you're gonna take ego into that, like book on my calendar, you're, you're gonna lose a lot of people. Um, so that's how I respond to people who are interested and eager uh, to get on the calendar. So one example there. All right, let's talk about inquisitive yes. So here's, an example right here. Maybe I've worked with another agency in the past, didn't go well, what makes you different? So you have two options here. Um, option number one, which I would do if you really like the lead, is to record a loom or Vidyard, whatever, I use Vidyard, pre-recorded video. So you're gonna say, hey, first name, great question. And I totally understand where you're coming from. I actually recorded you a two minute video answering that. And then you attach the video. So if you really want them as a client, um, and you're doing appointment setting yourself, you haven't outsourced it, record them a video. They're gonna, they're gonna watch it, uh, most likely. If not, you can follow up. Option two is just normal response. So let's go ahead and look at what a normal response looks like. We could say first name. Thanks for the response. Now let's, what can we do here? I've worked with another agency in the past and it didn't go well. Let's acknowledge that. Totally understand had bad experiences in the past. In fact, that's a common theme between our current clients. We're letting them know, hey, that, that makes sense. It, it happens, a lot of our clients have had that as well, not us. So totally understand you've had a bad experience in the past. In fact, that's a common theme between our current clients. What makes you different? So for example, if I'm selling my service here, uh, we work on a paper meeting basis. So I could say one of the main things that makes done for you meetings different is that we work on a performance basis where you only pay when you have someone book a call and show up to that call. So we don't make money and you don't spend money if there's no results. Happy to dive deeper into how this works. Does a 15 minute talk this week or next work for you? Let me know. Thanks. So we have thanked them for the response. We have acknowledged their uh, limiting belief or objection, whatever you want to call it. We have addressed it and we have moved to another call to action. So, you know, this, this will probably work here. Uh, not all the time, but probably. So let's go another time. This is what I call um, a maybe later. You know, we're working with an agency. We're doing this internally. Right now it's not a priority, but that's fine. Um, we can still respond with person. I see a lot of people just not respond to these and they're just throwing money away. Right now we're testing internally maybe a couple months. So two options here. Option one, offer help now. So it'd be like, first name, great to hear you're already on top of testing out cold email. It's a great effort to get new bookings. If it would be helpful for your testing, happy to share some free ideas over a 30 minute chat. Would that be good for you? So option one is let's provide them value. 
And off that value, it's likely we're going to book in a call um, or not book in a call, but they'd be interested in our service. So that's option one. So that's option one. Option two is going to be acknowledge and follow up later. So what we can do here for acknowledge and follow up later is going to be, well, let's acknowledge it. So we could do the same thing. Great to hear you're already in top of testing on cold mail. It's a great method to get new bookings. I'll touch base in a month or so to hear how it's going. Let me know if I can be of any help. Thanks. There we go. We, we acknowledge it. We're friendly and we're going to add them to our CRM to follow up a month later. Um, and then a month later, we're going to say, Hey, we talked about a month ago. We are testing your cold emails. Um, I mentioned to you, I'd follow up about now. How are things going? Pretty simple. No, thank you. For no, thank yous. I do two things. One, if I don't want them as a client, I just don't respond. Unless they ask for response, they just don't respond. Option two, if I want them as a client, I'll write them a, a polite message and I'll add them to follow up. So like, something like this. Thanks for the response. First name. Hope every hope company name has a great rest of the quarter. And that all is well. This friendly message, then three months later, I might say, hey, first name, you weren't interested. We talked a while back. Uh, however, I just want to touch base and see if something change. So just not pitching them. They said no. Just thank you message that we were polite. Add to see and follow up. People who are angry just don't respond. Um, I've seen some people with very fragile egos uh, try to respond to these people and they just waste their time. Um, they get bad mouth somewhere. Uh, they get reported as spam. Don't be a child. Just just leave these people. They've told you not to reach out to them. Doing anything more is just immature and it's not going anywhere. So the next key to appointment setting is having a very, very, very full pipeline. Um, a lot of people will respond positively with a question, neutrally, then they'll ghost you. That's natural. Now, the real winners are the ones who follow up pretty much forever. Um, I was talking to someone the other day who's had a really successful career in business, and he was telling me that his longest first touch point to deal close is like eight years. Like, you got to follow up uh, forever with people. So... There isn't like a set amount of time between follow-ups I normally do, um, but normally from the message that they've ghosted me on, I'll do like three days, six days, 10 days, 15, 20, 30, 50. So you can see, you know, I'm, I'm adding time in between intervals. I've been around 50 days. I just keep it at 50 days. So, you know, three days in, it might be something like, hey, first name, just want to check in and see if any times listed work for you. If not, let me know. We can sort something out. Hey, first name, haven't heard from you. Hope all's okay. Hope all's okay. Are you still looking to get more book meetings for X, Y, and Z? First name, just checking in. Does next week work? Hey, first name, going to assume something's changed. I want to go ahead and share for you some results of another client XYZ. Send them a case study. Send them a resource. Send them to a blog. Send them a check-in message. Another great thing, holidays. Happy New Year. Looking to get more appointments? Merry Christmas. Hope the family's doing great. You know, whatever it might be, you just want to keep following up with them. Um, they will tell you no if they really don't want you to email them. Don't worry about upsetting them. If they're upset, they can tell you, stop emailing me. Um, what we don't want is them not to reply. We want them to say yes or no. We, we don't want anything in between because that's uncertain. We want to close the gap. So if you go ahead and do all these things here, where understanding your position, are they the owner? Are they um, a level of employee? What, what position are they? Personalization, uh, like we shared like right here. Um, you know, more about you doing these other ones, the better. Uh, I'm, I normally focus on personalization for positive yes, bro. Uh, energy matching, polite calendar sending, um, following up forever. If you do these things, there is almost no way you're not going to be well on cold email. Um, what I see a lot of people do is they send out 200 emails. They get six responses, seven responses that are good. And then they get one appointment. And that's because they just didn't follow up. So if you're following up forever, you're going to do well. Um, if you have any questions on how to appointment set, drop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help out. I know it's something that some people tend to struggle on um, and it shouldn't be too hard. 
So if there's something you're stuck on, it's probably pretty easy to fix. I'm happy to walk you through it. That's it for this video. If you found it valuable, go ahead and drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you're looking for help booking meetings for your B2B business, check out dfymeetings.com, link in bio. You need to schedule a time to talk to myself or my team to see if we can help you out. Thanks for watching.